Spring Voyage presents Guinevere of Camelot, based on Mallory's Mort d'Artour. Your host is Miller Cradivet. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you at this time the third in a series of long voyage programs called Guinevere of Camelot. And we go back to the time of King Arthur and his famous Knights of the Round Table. In our first two episodes, we've been concerned with the wooing of Guinevere by Arthur and eventually the marriage of Guinevere and King Arthur. Now, this marriage was based on shaky foundations. In the first place, Arthur, he said, had fallen in love with Guinevere at first sight. But the idea of marriage appealed to him also because, as a part of his dowry, he obtained from Guinevere's father the famous magic table round. Guinevere, on the other hand, had doubts about the marriage. She was uncertain of it, but she acceded to her father's wishes and agreed to marry Arthur. Then Merlin, the sage, the magician of the court, prophesied that out of this union would come no good. As we read now, we find that there are further complications between Arthur and Guinevere. So let us turn to the third of our dramatic readings of Guinevere of Camelot. Soon after that Queen Guinevere was wed to Arthur, then the king and all his knights had great war for to get all England's realm into his hand. And when this was achieved, the knights made many jousts and tournaments, and some there were that ever so increased in arms and worship that they lightly passed all their fellows in prowess and noble deed. But in especial, one, Sir Lancelot, proved mightiest of all. Wherefore, the queen had him in greater favor than the rest, and for her he did many deeds of arms. And so it fell that on an evil day the queen stood sore accused, and Lancelot did battle in her honor, and did save her life from cruel burning at the stake. My noble Lancelot. My lady queen. Sir Lancelot, it is not right that you should so salute me. Better far that I should kneel and do you homage. Nay, my queen, I owe you honor, for I've made a vow to serve you. You've saved me from the fire. A thousand thanks are tangled on my tongue and I cannot untwine them. Such a deal of pretty speeches had I all rehearsed to tell my gratitude. And now you've come all unannounced. I'm not expected, then? Oh, pardon. I would not have ventured thus into your chamber had I not been told expressly. You were summoned here? By whom? My lord King Arthur bade me meet him here. Here? Then he... But you mean the king himself shall come? Why, yes, my lady. But you act all amazed. Why is it strange that Arthur's visits you? Could there be strife between you and the king now that you've been proven guiltless? Strife indeed. He judged me guilty, sentenced me to die a flaming death. He did what, as a king, he was required to do. I know, and this is not my quarrel. Let it rest. It is my own concern and nothing touching you. My queen, I have no right to do so. Yet I would speak boldly. Will you give me leave? I will. You are my queen, but Arthur is my king. To you I've sworn the deepest oath a knight may swear, and yet I've pledged unto the king my true allegiance. If some evil comes between you, then I'm severed into two as surely as if you had swung my sword and cleft my heart. It is not fair that you should suffer in a cause that is not yours. My troubles are my own. I'll not descend to begging sympathy. My life you saved. My heart is my concern. But Guinevere, tis I who beg, not you. Perhaps I may in some way ease your troubles, if you choose to trust me. I have known my lord the king since first his crown sat lightly on his brow. Then did he send you here to speak for him? Such roundabout encounters I have had with Arthur, wooed by Merlin, saved by you from burning at the stake. Is this the cause of your affliction? 
You yourself did once remind me that as king and judge, he would not fight for you. No, Lancelot, I can forgive him this. I know the law. Then pray you, tell me wherein has the king so drawn your anger? For until you spoke, I thought him ever just and fair to all. I, just and fair. But kind, compassionate. You ask me why I wondered that the king did summon you to meet him here with me. I shame myself to tell you. This just king has never once since I was wrongfully accused set foot inside my chamber door. No word of kindness passed his placid lips. No private smile of sweet encouragement formed on his honest face. And he... My husband, wedded to me with solemn, sacred vows. Guinevere, my queen, this is most hard. Not hard of him, but hard for you to bear. And bear the pain you must if you're to be a queen for Arthur. How can I explain his actions when they seem so harsh and cruel in the light of loving vows you made? You do defend him, then. I'm left alone to shiver in the coldness of his heart. My lady, you will never be alone so long as I am living. Arthur's ways are not the ways of other men. His heart is single-purposed. If to be a king he may not deal with kindness, then with all his strength he'll strive to cast the kindness out, so that his kingdom's call is answered well. For Arthur cannot so divide himself that one part fairly serves his duty's needs, while there's another and opposing urge. Is this to be commended? Nay, my lady. Accepted, rather. That I cannot do. He wishes me to love him. Does he know that love once given must needs be returned? Or else the heart that gave it first away will starve and die for want of nourishment. Oh, gentle Lancelot, I must confess that in you lies my only comfort now. I pray you, let me borrow from your strength a bit of courage to sustain me here. There is no need for a lending. Whatsoever you ask of me, I shall most gladly give. It seems I'll be forever in your debt. Perhaps I'll find a way to show my thanks some later day when all of this is past and covered by the crust of time. My queen, be on your mettle, for I hear the king. So soon, then? Enter if it please you, sir. My lady. Lancelot, you're ever prompt. So please you, sire. Stay, Guinevere. My lord, your conference is with Sir Lancelot. I'll not intrude. Pray give me leave to go. Not so, my queen. For you are at the heart of our discourse. I but did call him here to tell my grateful thanks for what he's done. My lord, I've done but what was right and just. For well I knew my lady Guinevere to be no poisoner. God fought for me and proved her innocent. Come, Guinevere. Have you no word of gratitude to give this noble knight for what he's done? My lord, I gave it ere you came. Tis well. And now shall we three descend and make the feast more merry by our presence? Nay, my lord. I beg that you will pardon me. I'll stay. Come, lady, I entreat you. If you please, I'd rather not. Go, Lancelot, I pray. Wait in the hall. I would have speech alone with Guinevere. As you command. Now, my queen, may I inquire the cause of your reluctance? Are you then not well? I am not ill. Or is it that you fear that you have lost respect in others' eyes? Have I in yours? Your innocence was proved a trial at arms. None can speak you ill without incurring banishment from court. But can a man be punished for his thoughts? But you are cleared of blame. All men must hold that you are sinless. Even you? Within your heart, can you in honest judgment tell me now that you believe me cleared of all my guilt when, when yesterday, so short a time ago? Is this the reason that you hold yourself aloof and will not come with me? My queen, the trial was fair, the evidence was great, 
the judgment that I passed was only such as custom did command. How can you blame a king for doing what he's bound by law to do? I find no fault with you as judge. But as a man, a husband, how can you expect that I will ever hence forget that in your heart you thought me guilty? Do not deny that all the evidence, the weighty proofs my false accusers gave, convinced you that in truth I'd done the deed. That at a feast prepared by my own hands, before a dozen honorable knights, I could have been so stupid as to serve an apple filled with poison to a knight whom I had, with whom I'd never had the slightest quarrel. Arthur, sire, my queen. Gawain has come with news most welcome for your ears. Gawain, come, enter. What portends this urgent haste? My lady queen, your blame is twice absolved. The villain has been found and has confessed his treason. Now it is known that that poor knight who died so foully slain perished because I'd surfeited of apples. How is this? I'd had a feast of apples ere I came to dine with your fair lady. So her gift I thrust aside and noticed not who ate until the knight who shared my taste for fruit lay groaning on the floor. And now it is known that one Sir Pinel, who did wish me ill, had planned this death for me. Then I am freed of any last suspicion. I, my queen, although of any evil-minded fool still doubted, when with God behind my sword I proved what I had trusted from the first, I would have taken vengeance on his life. Be not so hasty, Lancelot, for fools do come in many colors. Ah, Gawain. When I bethink me of the narrow ledge your life has trod all blindly, I am moved to shout with joy that you're safely delivered. I too am feeling rather light of head. A feast awaits below. We'll celebrate your near escape from peril, and I vow there'll be no apples served. Come, Sir Gawain, we'll hang the culprit by his heels until we've feasted to our fill. My appetite is unencumbered. Lead the way, my lord. Lord? A word, a single word for me. Ah, Guinevere, be easy with yourself. And what of my escape, more near than his? What word of comfort, what concern that I unjustly might have perished in the flames? Oh, God! My queen, remember that you asked for courage. Now you must use it, for now indeed you have been wronged. Oh, Lancelot, how can I greet him smiling, wear the crown beside him on the throne? My heart's a fire and burning to a cinder. Guinevere. To live unloved. No, no, Guinevere. Take heart. For I am beside you. Oh, my knight, I need you now a thousandfold. For this is agony more sharp than fire's death. Be comforted, my queen. Oh, Lancelot. Be comforted, my queen. and consultant for this evening has been Professor M. R. Craddaville of the Department of English and Speech at Iowa State College. Readers were Ricky Weiser as Guinevere, Frank Aluso as Arthur, Don Peterson as Gawain, Ted Johnson as Lancelot. <laughs>